Sports Catastrophe wishes all of our American viewers a happy 4th of July. Hey there, Heather Ho, there. It's Jeff Cutter Diamond. Welcome you to another Sports Catastrophe Birthday Boy. I know the Birthday Boy is usually supposed to be a living person, but I couldn't find any living people for July 4th other than George Steinbrenner. Well, Steinbrenner's dead, but anyway. So, not a lot of famous people born on July 4th. In the sports world, of course. But anyhow, um, I decided to do L. Davis. He was born July 4th, 1929 in Massachusetts. I didn't know he was from Massachusetts. But he died October 2011, age 82. He was the executive of the Oakland Raiders from 1972 to 2011. He was actually the head coach for a few years and part owner. And he was actually commissioner of the AFL in 1966. His model, Just Win Baby, was huge because the Raiders became very popular. He won three Super Bowl titles in the 70s and 80s, put himself into the Hawk, uh, Pro Football Hall of Fame in 1992. And despite L. Davis's biggest issues, he was active in civil rights. He refused to allow the Raiders to play in any city where black and white players had to be in separate hotels. He was the first NFL owner in the modern era to hire a black head coach, which was Archell, the first to hire a female chief executive, Amy Trask, and the second NFL owner to hire a Latino head coach, Tom Flores. He was the only executive in history to be an assistant coach, head coach, GM, commissioner, and owner. So, anyway... He went in the military, he went to college coaching, became the L.A. Chargers assistant when the Chargers started, were in the first season of the AFL in Los Angeles. And he was the backfield coach. All that. Al Davis said he actually won partial credit to design the Chargers offense. Unfortunately, the Chargers had a few good years, but then they fumbled and moved to San Diego. So, anyway, Davis did recommend to the Chargers this guy by the name of Lance Allworth from Arkansas. Sue! Allworth was a selection of the San Francisco 49ers. But Al Davis raced onto the field at the conclusion of Albert's final college game and signed him to a contract under the goalpost. And it was like shocking how the Niners head coach was in the stands. Anyway, Albert intru was introduced into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 78 by Al Davis. So anyway, Al Davis spoke with the Oakland owner about their head coaching job. The thing was that the team really were demoralized. The Raiders lost their first 13 games before winning the last game. So the Raiders were 1 and 13 that year. The Brewers' offensive priority was going to go to Oakland. But Davis signed. A three year deal to be the head coach, all that. The Raiders were in a mess. The only team in the American Football League to lose to have a losing record in their first three seasons. University of Cal didn't want them, didn't want the Raiders to play at their stadium. And they had to play their first two seasons at Casar Stadium in Candlestick. Park in San Francisco, of all places. They did construct a field called Frank Yule Field for 15,000 people, and it was shared with high schools. And then they decided to plan for the Oakland Coliseum. So, Al Davis became coach of the Raiders. And the Raiders ended up being 10-4. and four. Which was good. Unfortunately, though, they lost to the division champ. They were one game back of the division champion Chargers. So the 63 Raiders went from one win to 10. 
Unfortunately, they weren't that great. Anyway, the NFL was scary. The NFL. It was supposed to be a bare bones survivor. Now it's a significant rival to the NFL. A the AFL now had a contract with NBC after ABC lost their rights. Major construction stadiums were being built. The AFL could compete with the NFL and all that. Anyway, the problem was that Joe Foss, the first commissioner, had no good ability. So Al Davis was chosen to be commissioner. Instead, he would get a settlement and all that. And Al Davis did what he could. He was the Senate Commissioner of July of 1966. And he stopped. So anyway, Davis with Wayne Valley and Ed McGaugh bought a minority stake in the Raiders. All that. And Davis helped the Raiders out, winning the 1967 AFC Belt title game, which meant they could go to Super Bowl II, but they got beaten by the Green Bay Packers 33-14. The Raiders looked good. They, then the, they lost back-to-back -back AFL title games. So they first to the Super Bowl, and they're snapping the Jets and the Chiefs. And he hired John Madden to be the Raiders' sixth head coach in nine years. And the Raiders were successful, winning six division titles in the 1970s. The Raiders were on the prowl. All that. So, anyway. Davis bought the team in 1972. And it looked pretty good for him. He made, he made himself GM until his open death. Only three owners had the powers of general manager. Owners had Jerry Jones and Mike Brown. Davis had a lot of hands-on professionalness with the Raiders and all that. His classic image, slick back hair in a 50s-style ducktail, dark sunglasses, track suits, and Boston tinge speech, the Raiders. But Davis did their job, his job. The Raiders, in a span from 1967 to 1985, won 13 division titles, won AFL title, went to three Super, and won three Super Bowls. Super Bowl 11 back in 1977, Super Bowl 14 in 1980, well, Super Bowl 11, 1977, 1981, sorry, 15, and 18 in 1984. Made 15 playoff appearances. And the Raiders weren't doing that well. There are only one of five teams to play in the Super Bowl in four different decades. The Steelers, Pats, Giants, and Broncos are the others. So, anyway. Al Davis was inducted to the Hall of Fame in 1992. And it was amazing. Davis sold a minority stake in the Raiders for $150 million. He said he would not retire until he won two more Super Bowls or he died. Once a Raider, always a Raider was his philosophy. Unfortunately, Al Davis, there was a bad side to him. And that was involving Pete Rozelle and the right to move a team and all that. He wanted to move the Oakland Raiders to Los Angeles to give L.A. a good football Thing and all that. Davis ended up filing an antitrust lawsuit against the NFL, and ironically, his team won the Super Bowl. That was Super Bowl 14, and he had to 15, sorry, and he had to deal with Pete Rozelle giving him the trophy. And Al Davis thought that the NFL mistrusted, mistreated the USFL. He was the only NFL owner to say so. So he moved the team to Los Angeles for the 82 season. They won Super Bowl a couple years later. And he was okay. But then, you know, things were crumbling at the LA Memorial Coliseum. So he wanted to move the team back to Oakland. 
He couldn't get a new stadium in Los Angeles, and he almost moved the, the team to Sacramento. Davies wanted to move the team back to Oakland. Anyway. They moved back to Oakland for 95, and then basically Mount Davis, the, the triple-tiered stands at Oakland Coliseum, were built. It ruined the baseball team. The A's were playing at a decent stadium that had a nice ambiance to it, but nope, they did it for football. Anyway. Yeah, it was a great feud and all that between Davis and Roselle and all that. In 2021, there was a 30 for 30 about Al Davis versus the NFL and all that. The narrow structure uses reconstructions of Davis Roselle to tell its story. Kind of weird. Anyway. So, Davis did a lot of good things. Davis shockingly traded Ken Stabler away from Oakland. He was the mainstay, and a lot of the Raider community was upset that Davis traded him to Houston for Dan Pastorini. The move at first wasn't really that great because Pastorini got hurt, which meant that Jim Plunkett would have to come off the bench. And somehow, in some way, the Raiders got to the playoffs. The Raiders defeated Ken Stabler and the Oilers in the wildcard game, irony of ironies. Well, in Oakland. And then they got to Super Bowl 15 beating the Eagles. It was shocking. They were the first wildcard team to win the Super Bowl. But of course, you know, the Raiders, that was the year that Plunkett led the Raiders to that big win over Cleveland. Red right 88. All that. Marcus Allen was ordered benched by Davis following a contract dispute. And Davis said he was a cancer on the team. Marcus Allen would then be released in 92 and played five years for the Chiefs. It was hard to believe that L. Davis had a grudge against Marcus Allen and that Marcus Allen allegedly used voodoo and putting a picture of Al Davis in the in a thing in a container and putting ice cubes in it to freeze him. And then Al Davis dealt John Gruden, his head coach, to Tampa for first-round picks and all that, which was shocking. I mean, why would you trade your head coach to Tampa? His Well, the new head coach, Bill Callahan, helped Oakland win a trip to the Super Bowl. But the worst part was that he faced they faced John Gruden, who helped Tampa get to the Super Bowl. And Gruden got revenge on the Raiders by crushing the Raiders 48-21. Basically, the Gruden knew that the Raiders didn't change a lot of their looks on offense, and it worked. Fortunately, though, that Raiders loss in the Super Bowl would be the end of the road as the Raiders were really bad. All that multiple head coaches, the first overall pick, Jamarcus Russell, eating himself out of a job. And anyway. The Raiders tried their best and all that. The good news for Al Davis is he was key in the Civil Rights Union. So yeah, he did his job and all that. Davis's wife, Carol, and only child Mark were survived by Al Davis. Mark became the general, managing general partner and his mom owns the majority of the team. Al Davis' his mother actually lived to 103 years old and died in 2001. And then after Al Davis died, they made the Al Davis Memorial Torch. There are two torches. The original torch is a gas-operated torch brought out on game days at Oakland Coliseum. It was lit by former Raiders player or coach prior to the home game. And then that individual would sign the back of the torch. Anyway, the torch, the new torch is the largest 3D printed object in the world with an 85 fo uh, foot or 26 meter tall torch being there. So, Al Davis did his job.
And he may be controversial, but he was still a decent owner. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond. I do.